number two, bridge the power gap and mobilize your non-marketing colleagues by walking the halls. Now, they have their own busy agendas. You walk through the door and say to them, um, can we launch a new product, uh, change the way you do things, uh, whatever. Um, basically, they're going to hope you get run over by a bus on your way back to your office. All right? You're not making their lives uh, any easier. Um, so um, uh, the challenge uh, is uh, to understand their perspective. I don't use the term um, internal marketing. Internal marketing implies the marketers have the answers and have to sell them. Okay? That's not what I'm describing. I'm describing something much more collaborative, which is they aren't idiots. They have their own agendas. You maximize the V zone by working collaboratively with your non-marketing colleagues uh, and, and creatively and come up with new, better solutions which meet both sets of needs better than the competition. You can't uh, mobilize them uh, if, if they're not interested. What you can do is um, tell them a great story. And I think that a lot of marketers are rather nervous when we say this because you think, you know, do I have to be kind of Mark Twain, uh, a great storyteller? The stories that mobilize people can be very, very simple. Um, when Ford was close to collapse, CMO Jim Farley gave people hope by saying for generations of drivers, the blue Ford logo stood for pride and personal adventure. Let's bring back our customers' pride and sense of adventure. Now, to convince your non-marketing colleagues, you have to walk the halls and work with them. And here's another example. Steve Walker, who was a product manager at Sony Ericsson, uh, and uh, he created one of the company's biggest successes, uh, you remember in the late 1990s, phone sales were slowing down. And Sony Ericsson was a big player. And Steve said, people love to listen to music. Why don't we put music on our phones? We own the Walkman brand. Why not create a Walkman phone? Colleagues thought he was mad. Um, the development team said, it's hard to integrate good synthesizers in something so small. The software team said, we have no capacity. Legal said we won't be able to afford the rights at an affordable price. Um, but instead of uh, arguing, what he did is surprise them. He walked the halls, he listened to all their concerns, and as they talked them through, most of those concerns disappeared. And that's the Walkman phone. After many such discussions, they launched in 2005, and it was an instant hit. At its peak, it stood for 25% of global revenue. Now, it was only a short-term success because what happened in this market in 2007? 2007 is year zero for mobile internet. Okay, so the, the first iPhone, 2007. And of course, Apple then sort of destroyed everybody uh, in its path. But by then, Steve had created a lot of value for the company by walking the halls, listening to his colleagues, and turning his dream of a Walkman phone into reality. Okay, so we, we all know you have to get outside the silo and you have to make it happen. It doesn't happen naturally. Again, the mo most successful marketers now studied, they bridged the power gap. They made marketing relevant to their non-marketing colleagues by hitting the head and the heart with a compelling story, walking the halls and also going first. That is acting as a role model and leading from the front. These together it accounted for 22% of the explicable variation in their business impact and a massive 32% of the variation in their career success. 